Hey there, it's Ash from Elementor. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the button widget to better our understanding of how to style, customize, and use this crucial website element. So get comfy and let's get started. Buttons are an important aspect of most websites. They provide a universal standard of encouraging visitors to perform an action, and when used correctly, can really boost your design and conversions. In this example, we're going to create a button within the Hero section and configure it to link to a product page. To get started, let's delete the existing button and create a new one from scratch. Simply search for the button widget and drop it into your editor. The Edit Button section contains three tabs where you can amend the contents and style of the button. Let's go through these in order. To start with, ensure you have the content tab selected. In this area, we are able to set several elements of the button. First up is type. This allows us to define a preset style for the button. There is info, success, warning, and danger. For this tutorial, we'll leave it as default as we're going to apply some custom styles to create the desired result. Next is the text area. Here we can declare the text that we would like to appear within the button. In the text field, we'll type by now. We also have an option here to populate this section with dynamic content. The next option allows us to apply a link to the button. If you know the URL, you can simply type it into the field, or you can perform a search of your existing pages by typing the first few letters like so. To display more link options, select the gear icon. Here we can specify if we would like the link to open into a new tab. The alignment area will allow you to specify the position of the button. The options available are left, center, right, and justified. You'll see justified fills the available space of the container. We'll set this as left aligned. Size allows us to define a preset button size. We have extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. In this example, we'll leave it as small. Next, we have the icon option. Here we can add an icon to your button, which adds a great visual aspect for your visitors. By default, no icon is applied, and you can choose to upload a custom icon here, or choose one from the icon library. We're going to choose icon library, Search for your desired icon like so. Once you've found your icon, select Insert, and this will add it to your button. The icon position allows us to set whether the icon is displayed before or after the text. An icon space and adjust the space between the text and the icon. This design doesn't require an icon, so we'll switch this off for now. If required, we can also specify a button ID in this section here. Now, switch to the Style tab. This section allows us to set the styling options for the button so we can make it fit with the look and feel of the website. The first option we see is Typography. In this area, we can specify exact requirements for the text of our button. Here, we can set the font via the global font selection, or we can set the font manually. Let's select the edit icon. Set the font family to Montserrat. The font size to 16 pixels. Weight will set to 600. Transform allows us to manage the capitalization of the text. Select the drop down to view the available options. For our button, we're going to set this to uppercase. Style can be left as default. Decoration can also be left as default. Next, we'll adjust the line height of our text. Let's switch this to pixels and change it to 19. And finally, let's set the letter spacing to 1.3. If required, you can also apply a shadow effect to your text here. Now let's apply some new colors to the button. With the normal tab selected, change the text color to white and the background color to black. We'll set the border type to solid 
the width to one pixel on all sides, and the border color to black. This button will have square edges, so we'll set the border radius to zero pixels on all sides. If you wanted to create a rounded button, simply increase these values to achieve the desired result. Box shadow will apply a shadow effect to the button. And finally, padding will allow you to fine tune the spacing on all sides of your button. Let's unlink these values and enter 20 pixels on the top, 65 pixels on the right, 20 pixels on the bottom, and 65 pixels on the left. Okay, the button is really starting to take shape now. Let's apply some additional styles so that when a user hovers over the button, it interacts with them. Switch over to the hover tab. We'll set the text color to black. We'll set the background color to transparent, and we'll do this by moving the slider all the way to the left. This will allow the background color or image to show through the button on hover. And we'll set the border color to black. The hover animation option allows us to choose an animation for the button. For example, we can apply the grow animation, and as you can see, this adds a subtle effect when the user hovers over the button. Let's leave this as none for now. Finally, we'll explore the advanced tab. Here we are able to set advanced options for your button. Firstly, we have the advanced section where we can apply additional margin and pad into the button widget. This section also allows us to set the Z index, ID, and class for the button widget. To find out more about these options, check out our in depth tutorials on our channel. Next is the motion effects area. Here we can apply some scrolling and mouse effects, as well as an entrance animation. In our design, we're going to add a subtle fade in animation. Under entrance animation, select fade in, set the animation duration to slow, and the animation delay to 400. If you would like to learn more about these animations, check out our dedicated motion effects playlist. The background tab allows us to specify a background color for the button widget. Notice how it fills the entire background of the widget. Border, similar to the background tab, allows us to apply a border to the entire button widget, not just the button itself. The positioning area allows us to define some advanced position rules. For example, if we wanted to have two buttons side by side, we would adjust the width to inline, and if we now duplicate our button, you can see that they sit side by side. Let's delete this duplicated button for now, and we'll revert the positioning back to default on the first button. Responsive will allow you to hide your button on specific screen sizes. Attributes allows you to define some custom attributes for your button. And last but not least, if you need to add any custom CSS to your button, you can do so in the custom CSS tab. You can check out our dedicated tutorials on each of these options. And there we have it. You now have a much better understanding of how the button widget works and how you can implement it into your website. Thank you for watching. Please comment below with any questions that you have about the button widget and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.